Everybody in place. All right, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome everyone, uh, those viewing at home, those in attendance tonight, to the February 5th, February 25th, 2013 business meeting of the Coast Hill Township Board of Trustees. Let's begin with a Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, once again, welcome everyone. Uh, we're starting a little bit late. We were wrapping up a study session on the budget. Uh, Mr. Budney, Mr. Van Oss, and myself have spent many hours the last couple of weeks working on a budget. Um, now the rest of the board is uh, pretty much up to speed. We'll have you up to speed shortly. We'll be presenting it in the uh, in the March meetings. With that being said, uh, we're beginning with a presentation. Uh, turn it over to Chief Porcerelli on uh, what he's researched on a possible mobile gun range. So, Chief, the presentation time is yours. Good evening. Uh, what we'll do here is I just have a uh, five-minute video. That's it, and it kind of explains. Uh, hopefully, it'll um, explain some of the questions you may already have. Then I have a matrix that I'm going to show you, and we'll just talk a little bit uh, from there. If you have any questions, hopefully this will be fairly brief. But uh, Joe, hit the uh, looking at this. On this one. This is just about the Megat company itself, then it'll get into the, the gun line. That's every every military base has that kind of chicane to get in now. You don't think it's going through? You guys don't get sound where not that advanced. No, but like I'm here. Yeah. Well, I think that upgrade in the budget is yeah. getting a little bit closer. Better and better all the time, isn't it? <laughs> Okay, we're going to skip this here. <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to talk about it a little bit then. That'll work. I'm just, I apologize for that. <laughs> yeah, with the, with the mobile gun in my life. Oh, you click the other. Stand by. Talk fast, Chief. So, we're seeing the mobile gun range is a trailer. Configurations include a six lane side by side roof range, which could be operated okay, yeah, one range or two as two three position ranges, and an end to end road range that lane, offers a three lane range with a 25 yard target across. distance. The construction of the road range begins with a 53 foot over the road trailer. The trailer's interior is lined with thermal insulating materials and covered with ballistic steel panels. Final finish treatments include rubber pavers on the floor and acoustical material for sound absorption. Offering complete ballistic security and helps from noise reduction. 
options. The patches and mega training systems for gliding ground trap and environmentally friendly granular rubber bullet trap capture the grounds virtually intact, providing a cleaner and safer range environment and simplifying lead removal. From under five feet, a shooter can fire full auto into the reclining grand trap without danger of ricochet or back splatter. Kind of, uh, the shooting stalls provide three shooting positions. The clear ballistic panel offers an unobstructed view of the firing line while providing protection from misdirected shots. A winged barricade can swing in front of shooters to allow firing with both their strong and weak hands and simulate shooting around obstructions. Firing line security motion sensors alert shooters of movement by signal lights and automatically edging targets. A 360-degree bi-directional turning target system comes standard in the road range, providing friend boat target presentations for reactive response and judgmental training. Random edging and turning features prevent shooters from anticipating the target. An available onboard target light creates variable light conditions. The Rangemaster 9000 is a menu-driven range control system with graphical real-time display and position. With a few keystrokes, training programs can be conveniently entered and saved for future use. Rangemaster 9000 also controls support systems such as target lighting and range security systems. Individual control units at each firing position allow shooters to have independent control of their lane by entering commands on the keypad or executing a program scenario. Along with its standard target system, the road range can be equipped with a... I'm going to, is, I'm going to uh, they can put this on the screen now. Uh, this is a matrix that, a comparison that I put up. And we can just go through this. Well, Dale set this up. We went down to Georgia and we looked at the range. We went in uh, this defense uh, contractor's company and Megat is within that, the DOD building there. And we spent about three hours actually down there. We shot inside, we uh, listened, what it would sound like from the outside. We were a little bit concerned about, we have it at the police station, how loud is it? And what we found also is uh, it has 80 decibels outside during um, anybody that's in there shooting. And the big three, the auto, uh, companies use 82 decibels for a vehicle 10 feet away at 30 miles an hour has to be under 82 decibels for it to pass. So the noise was, I, I would, it just sounded like uh, somebody was inside just tapping on the, the side of the wall, the trailer. That's, it was unbelievable how much you didn't hear from that. Um, it was very quiet. Um, it was everything that uh, we looked at and needed. And what I did is, just to show you, I have a cost comparison or a matrix that I put up here. Um, and if you go through the first, uh, what we did, the cost, I put the east side of Hangar 1, which was a, um, we were with the uh, Airport Commission or Commerce Park Commission for the last four, maybe five years of negotiations. We got some numbers, Building 63 is what um, I wanted to try and rent, but um, unfortunately we were voted out of that. And the uh, old range, and then the trend gun range is what we use right now. That's where we shoot, and that's the four uh, areas that I compared. So the first one, the cost, um, 406000 to $558,000 is what all the different figures we got for the east side of Anger 1. That estimation of 406 is quite low because that doesn't show the rooms we actually need. So. That should be a little higher anyway. In building 63, it ranged from 550 to 600,000 to build the gun range in 63. The mobile gun range is, I show 314. I've never seen a company call you up and tell you that they overpriced the range at $5,000, which was beyond me. So actually, it's around 309 and 310 now. That gentleman called me today. So I didn't mark that on there yet. When I have their plus generator, um, there's different ways of hooking this up. You can use a portable generator. You can use a generator hooked right to the side of the trailer. You can use shore power, which comes right from the uh, police and fire station. They bore under the road there, or the uh, pavement rather, the parking lot. And then they hook up a power station next to where you're going to put it. So what we're going to have to add somewhere down the line is going to be um, between 15,000 and 25,000 total, depending on which way we hook it up. Uh, if we go with the portable generator, which we probably will, we can cut those costs even more. Um, that's just the generator that is trailer. Um, it's probably just a little bit bigger than this. 
here, uh, maybe the size of this whole thing here in this trailer, and you just set it next to wherever you want the power, and obviously just plug it from there. But that is the cheapest way to go, but I put in um, the entire. So that's the cost range for uh, all four areas. The yearly rental fees, um, we got from the east side of Hangar 1 and Building 63, everything from 4800 a month, I'm sorry, I apologize, 4800 a year to 18000 a year rental fee. Now, obviously, um, trend down the end there, we spent $500 running that a year. That's the approximate cost for trend. The next area for overtime, um, I have minimal down. We usually just have a range officer work 12, two range officers work 12 hours. So only the range officer is getting overtime, so that's why it's minimal. But if we use Trenton's gun range, we have to pay for it with overtime, and I can't use forfeiture money for that overtime. So it's about 16000 that I have to budget extra in overtime. Yes, annually. That's the reason that, that cost is so high. Um, the other costs, um, if I could just back up a second, for the uh, um, different stationary, if you will, buildings or the mobile gun range will be used with 100% forfeiture funds. Now for those, there are a couple of new trustees on the uh, on the board. If you don't know the forfeiture funds, can only be used for certain items. They can't be used for wages, fringes, or benefits. So I've saved enough money up for the mobile range now, but I don't have enough actually to start any of these big projects. This is kind of my uh, um, fund that's been keeping us going throughout the years. The, the problem with this is we are paying one officer out of that. We need equipment. We need other things. One car out of that I've been paying. So the, the bottom line is it's the mobile gun range would be 100% tax-free to the taxpayers and will come totally out and, and totally out of the uh, forfeiture funds. And also the hookup, the generator, whatever we buy for is 100% from the forfeiture funds. The uh, architecture fees, as you can see, there's fees in any building you're going to build. And the gun range, obviously, there isn't any trend. It's not applicable. Uh, the resale value, there's obviously resale to this gun range if we were to sell it down the line. Um, I was told when we build a gun range, and um, Mike is here, we, we can um, talk on this if he needs to later. But, uh, I was told by people from the uh, airport commission that if we spend $500,000 and we build a gun range out here and we rent a building, we have to give it back to the township in 20 years. So that's a hit on us also. Um, so the next item, the maintenance fees, they're all about the same. The only difference with the mobile gun range is the footprint is smaller. So you'd be spending less in filters, you'd be spending less in cleanup if you have to. The footprint of the size of the building itself, everything is smaller. And that would be, um, the cost would be less per year, but there would be a maintenance fee in all of them. Now on the utilities, if you build the range, I'm going to need to get gas, electric, phone, water, and a dumpster. I'm going to have to... <laughs> get seasick. <laughs> Caught me. Um, so anyway, with the mobile gun range, there's obviously, there's no utilities fee. There is not that fee either. Um, when I have complete control on the next line there, it's more of uh, the location, the safety and security. Not that it would be safe down here at the airport. I guess it would be. But we can't really control it. When it's at the station, we have full control over it. We have it camera. We can see it. We're there with it. There wouldn't be uh, any problems. We've never had any problem around the station in the impound. We've never had anything stolen out of the impound, as far as I know, ever. So, um, obviously, the only uh, uh, guess on that would be the would be the gun, the mobile gun range. Could you rent it out? Yes, we built a building, or we had the mobile gun range. You could recoup some of the money in both instances for renting it to uh, other agencies. That's not a problem. All of them uh, can do that. Now, problem, another problem that I had was the cost overrun. I'm told with any construction cost, there's about a 20% overrun. You should, it should be built in for that. I'm not exactly sure um, if that's a correct figure. Sometimes it goes way over there, obviously. It is what it is with the mobile gun range. Um, the 310 or whatever we pay, and then plus the uh, power source, um, that is what it is. That's a set price. The durability, they started building their gun ranges in the 80s. 
they're still out there, so I'm not sure what they get in them. They've gotten some up to 30 years right now that are still working. A building, obviously, you get around 30 years just because things, um, obviously, it's kind of not as quick as how computers change, but the equipment changes, better things come out, the turnover. Um, so that was the matrix, and obviously what it shows here, there's no doubt that the uh, mobile gun range beats it in every way. Uh, cost, no rental fee. Um, another big thing was uh, no utilities. So the overall cost um, definitely beat uh, the other ways to go. And I'm trying to gun range to say, why don't we go there and we just rent it for 500 a year? But that 16000 comes from taxpaying dollars out of my budget I have to pay every year. We have to add um, to the budget just for overtime because I can't pay it with forfeiture. So what is that, 10 years, 160000 and 20 years, was it 320 So you're looking at um, a lot of money that you're spending in all these different areas, and I think the biggest bang for the buck is the, is the mobile gun range, the way to go for gross seal. The company itself, I'm sorry you couldn't hear what they were talking about on the, uh, on the video, but Megat, they have uh, installed 12,000 gun ranges across the world. Some of their clients that they have, uh, they have the U.S. Navy, which has 100 of these mobile gun ranges, and LAPD is 18. I talked to a police chief in New York, and they have 3,000 individuals in their police department, and they have one of these. And what they say is perfect about it is they put it wherever they want it in their city, and they have different pre. This isn't New York City, though. It's, um, it's actually a county police department. So they put it at their different precincts, and the officers throughout the shifts can just stop in, qualify. They get he saves all kinds of overtime because he just has to pay the range officers to be there. But they're already getting paid to be there anyway, so he pays no overtime. They were very happy with it. I went over the sound test. I was concerned about that. What would sound like being, you know, there's some houses uh, near the police station, and uh, it was amazing how quiet it actually was. Um, Again, we went down to Georgia, we saw everything, we talked to them. Um, we we're very happy with what we saw and what they showed us. Uh, I think our next step, I was talking, and Eric even uh, suggested that I believe the next step would possibly be just to go to the Planning Commission to see what they thought about putting that at the police station. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a necessary step or if the police department, I'm not going to say we're exempt, but I'm more than happy to go in front of them out of both respect and the right thing to do just to make sure we're all set with this to see what they think but we'll we'll talk that over um, but that's that's basically it and uh, again the video it was explaining more about the company and what it was but I hope uh, you have an understanding now of what you're looking at what it's for what it's used for and the uh, different costs so if there's any questions just uh, just to add a little bit on, on the history uh, chief so in 2008, when the new board came in, um, we decided that the uh, the old gun range, which uh, is on the east side of Hangar One, um, was uh, when was basically started when the uh, when the Navy left the building. Uh, that we needed to condemn that side of the building for the, uh, the the condition that was in the water leaks, the lead, the uh, you know the, the just the issues that that building had. So in 2009, we ended up closing that gun range down. So the police has been have been operating in their own gun range up until 2009, where we had to shut it down, which is when they have been forced to uh, to go to Trenton. And luckily, Trenton, you know, at least for the time being, is letting us uh, is letting us use their their range when we need to to qualify. So that just brings up a little bit of the history for the people who weren't on board on, on where this is at. Is at. So the police commission and, and the airport commission have been studying sites for a new gun range ever since. Um, when we first started studying in the 2009 time period, this, these mobile ranges were around $500,000. Cost of the you know renovating Hangar One was you know between $500,000 and $1.4 million. So there's been an extensive amount of study, and uh, really the reason for for bringing this up to the board tonight is just to let everyone know you know where this is at. And what you know, what the options are. Right now, it looks like our best option from a from a uh, fiscal responsibility or fiscal standpoint is, is this mobile gun range. So it's really this is really an attempt to bring the board up to speed with what's been going on with the gun range since we condemned it in 2009, how the police department's getting by, and, and what we've been planning for, uh, and various various options that we continue to study. 
One of the things Eric and I discussed earlier was the incredible cost of a, of a shooting incident if it's done improperly. It's, it's just critically important that our police officers meet or are well trained. We just can't afford to let that training lapse to have them uh, in a situation where they don't meet full qualifications. So that's this is an important this is an important issue. Joe, I think this is a very unique idea. I like it. But you also mentioned revenue. Have you given any thought or talked to other police departments that have this sort of range and what the yes, commitments are? Yes, I already have verbal commitments from um, the Border Patrol, from the DEA, from a couple of um, separate divisions actually in the DEA, plus two police departments. They'd be very interested in running it, and there's a possibility um, that this piece of equipment could be, it, it was very cheap for this. We have it set up through Lions Towing to take this piece of equipment to, say, the Border Patrol Station in Gibraltar, where if they have 25 officers or 30 officers, through the next few days, those officers can shoot while they're on duty with the range officer, so they don't have to pay overtime either or have to send them to Gross Seal. Right. So there's a possibility of a lot of different ways to recoup it, but I already have at least four verbal commitments that they would. Uh, Is there a way to customize the truck exterior wise from the standpoint of it being? You know a PR vehicle for you guys as well we can put whatever we want it comes plain we can paint it we can decal it we can do whatever we want to okay. it yeah good and that's one reason I was going to go um, to the Planning Commission again I, I've never been in the Planning Commission friendly for the Police Department I don't know what that setup is or what we do but um, if we need to go to them to see you know what they would want I, I'm not even sure if we're a commercial area where we're at so it's special land use so okay. okay so it'd be yeah, reviewed yeah. under special land use okay but that's one of the reasons there to see what they would want but we can make it look any way we want and there is ways of recouping some of the, the cost obviously the maintenance fees we would make sure the rent would cover it, everything it would cost um, and they would have to pay to have it taken somewhere yeah. not us. right great chief yes sir a couple of questions you answered right who pulls it you can have somebody with a tractor. Yeah, we have already talked to Lions Towing. And, and you're going to you're going to include apartment. you're going to do that uh, include it as a cost of rental transportation to and from. Yeah, if you want it in your lot, you you'll pay the the it's only seventy five dollars they charge the police department. I know it's a little bit more detail. Another question: Indoor air quality is this thing yes. air conditioned? Actually, this um, it moves the air through this at seventy five feet a minute. It moves the entire air system through there. What the engineer explained to us is when you have a gun range, to have the same HVAC system in a gun range to be as clean as this system, you would have to have a much more powerful um, HVAC system than what comes on any gun range that you have. The smaller the footprint they were telling me, the better it is to move that air through there and keep it cleaner. He says it's cleaner going out on the vents and it's cleaner inside while you're shooting because of the way the system is. it uh, um, Apparently at 75 foot a minute isn't what you have at a gun range in, in removing the entire system and recirculating that air you know, through that HVAC system, through start to finish. It's air changes per hour that you calculate. I don't, I don't know what okay, that is. Yeah, that was per minute, but he said that was because the footprints are smaller, it's only three lanes, and I believe it's only 100 um, inches wide that that is so powerful because when we got in it we noticed in the summertime the blowing on it he says you don't even need air conditioning inside of it for the summer do it we do have heat and cold in it but you don't need it need to run anything just because it's so cool and how fast that air is moving just so two, just uh, two other quick ones uh, lead and brass disposal how is that handled that is the new rubber trap that they have and what you do every so often three four years you have to clean that trap out. There's a way of maintaining the trap and we have to rake it and do a few things to it and that lasts longer and then every like three to five years he said you actually have a company come in and that's what you would have in all these new ranges also. The company would come in and they would clean the brass out of the, uh, I'm sorry, clean the lead out of the tire area and if you need a new, um, you know, I don't know what comes in. Somebody's you recycling the lead. You could do that, yes. Bottom line. Yes. And, uh, is there a possibility if they've been around for a long period of time that they might have used units? Just yes, curious. they do. 
They do have used units. They're not suggesting you should. I already looked at their used units, and their used units are the ones they take to all their shows, like the SHOT Show in Las Vegas has everything for building gun ranges. Um, they've taken it to the Middle East, Afghanistan, Iraq. The problem with those is they're $500,000 units. They have every option on them. They put every option on their <coughs> two units that they have just to show them to everybody. So they gave me a bid. They actually did. Um, of about three hundred seventy-five thousand dollars for one of the, the one of the demos. It's not something. Yeah, I mean they have everything on it. I mean it, it'll. It, it, there's just some things on there that were. You don't need to get that deep for me. Don't yeah, just gonna, yeah, it's you don't need it. <laughs> you don't need a beer <laughs> can holder or anything like that. Yeah. <laughs> Since we're by the police station, we all we will have the um, um, the armor there. Obviously, we also have. Not only the wash station for the hands and the eyes if something happens, but we have a shower there we can put you right in. I mean, there's things that, you know, we would be exempt from and due to the fact that it's right there so we wouldn't need all those other rooms. And all, but they put all kinds of stuff inside there. And it, it was just too expensive. And it's used and it's so been it's Iraq nice. and Afghanistan. and Not quite sure how long something will Thank you. Joe? Thank uh, you. The price that you have here is that with everything that you want on it. Absolutely, that's with some extras at three hundred nine. Now it does say three fourteen, but it's three hundred nine or three ten now. Yes, yes. Anything else for uh, Chief Porcelli? Uh -huh. right. Chief, how long? Uh, what's your place in order? Just talking about the delivery. They said they can build it, deliver it, and set it up within one hundred and eighty days. They truck it here, obviously, from... Uh, that's included, I'm sorry, in the fee, too. I didn't put that on there. But the fee is included in the 310 to bring it up here from Sewanee. They build them in Sewanee, Georgia. at that Department of Defense um, contractor uh, warehouse there. Thanks. Anything else for the Chief? All right. Good Thank research. You. Thanks, Chief. Thank you, Joe. Okay, at this time... We need to consider additions, deletions to the agenda, and I will go first. I'd like to uh, recommend or request the board to delete action item number two, the uh, acknowledgement of lender for the Down River Community Conference uh, DMA radio purchase. Second. Se okay, second by uh, Mrs. Smith, and the reason is we just we don't we don't have the paperwork from DCC yet. Is the short version. So, uh, questions for me on that? We're just not ready for it. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, that will be deleted from the agenda. Um, Mr. Budney? Yes, uh, I'd like to uh, delete item number five from our action items. Uh, this item was combined with uh, action item number four, uh, making action item number five. Sporting this. Okay. Seconded by Treasurer Van Oss. Any questions for Mr. Budney on that? All right, with uh, none offered, those in favor of deleting action item five, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None offered. Um, any other additions, deletions to the agenda? All right, with none offered, I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda as amended. So moved. Moved aye. by Trustee Posias, seconded by Mr. Budney. Um, those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None offered. The agenda stands amended. Consent agenda. Uh, Mr. Supervisor, I'd like to make a motion to approve Consent Agenda 13-025, which consists of the minutes of the February 11, 2013 regular meeting and the check register dated February 22, 2013. Support. Okay, seconded by uh, Trustee Budney. Comments, questions from the board? With none offered, those in favor of approving the consent agenda is published. Second by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None offered. This consent agenda stands approved. This time we will step to a public hearing. I'll invite uh, Mr. Ray. As you know, we're fortunate every year to uh, receive funding to the community through the federal government that's managed by Wayne County, the Community Development Block Grant Program. And this year they're um, expecting the same amount, $61,864. Um, there's limitations on the money activities funded by CDBG must meet at least one of the following three criteria. 
benefit low to moderate income persons, address the prevention or elimination of slum and blight, or meet community development needs stemming from a declared state of emergency. Um, I have four projects we're proposing. Um, the last couple of years, several years, there's been airport projects on there, and currently, um, 2010, 2011, there's still 37,180 from 2010, 36,652 from 2011. We're not talking about those tonight, but I just want to let you know that that money is still there. I attended a, pub, or a, a meeting in Trenton last week where all the communities go, and either Wayne County recaptures it or you get an extension. We do have an extension on the uh, 37,000 and 36,000 through September. And I've submitted several projects for that money that would come back to the before we do anything with that, um, that had to be decided by the township board. Mm -hmm. And then this year, the current year we're in, there's 36,000 or 33,680 that the airport hasn't spent. So that would be 107,512. And Mike would probably be able to give you more detail what's going on with that. Um, but this year's funds, the 61 are separate. I have listed, um, it's very vital to senior programming. Um, you're only supposed to be able to use 10%, but our hope is every year other communities in that Wayne County pot don't go for senior programs. They may go for sidewalks or um, other type of projects. And so uh, last year we were going for 24. I think we're at 22.6, and so that's going to be a little under coming in. Um, vital to our program. Senior Alliance, I put in... Um, 1750 for that. We help Senior Alliance run their programs and then in turn they provide some really great services and those are detailed in your, your packet. Um, planning would be another one. Once again, 10% of your funding can be used for planning. Uh, this Friday, we, or this Thursday, we have um, the Historical Society coming to talk about the Waterfront Park, some of the things they presented during the public hearings on um, the importance of that area, the Historical Park. And then next month, um, Mr. Fields coming from the Conservancy on the plannings that they have discussed during the process when um, Dale and people were heading up that committee. They're coming back through now. So you'd have those two meetings with key community groups, the Historical Society, the Conservancy, and in July this funding would become available. I think we'd have a lot of input on that um, information. So it'd be nice to have, not spend any more than that, but use our planning firm to go over ADA issues, possible parking scenarios. So when we go to really get that part going where we've looked at out all the, the factors. So I'd like to use that if possible starting in July. And this has uh, been talked with the Rep Commission. And then ADA improvements at the park, uh, Centennial Farm. Uh, the front portion of the building, the activity buildings where the ADA is, that's um, existing asphalt that's been there since the, before the township purchased the farm and that's getting a little bit, it's deteriorating. On um, the side where the exits are, we'd like to do a little work there. And then as you go out to the yard in the back in the pavilion, there'd be some ADA accessibility. I think we could use all 29 if you were wondering about that parking area and what we we're going to use all that money for. But that's what's up there tonight. It can be changed if the airport has projects or there's other projects in the community you might think. It's pretty hard to spend the money in Gross Hill. It's based on um, the overall population income level and some things that... Some communities can do in parks. We can't necessarily do that. Well, it's just kind of rough. I wish they'd revise some of those rules. So you hit us with a lot of numbers, Tim. Yeah, sixty-one thousand. <laughs> several you've seen before. They help yeah. run the department, and our senior well over half, close to half, is for seniors. And what strings come with these grants, if any? Um, there's really, it's, we've been doing it for years. There's nothing that's yeah. really come back that we can't follow as far as guidelines and rules. The, the, the basics are those three areas. If you look at um, number one, resident low to moderate income, they put ADA in that category. That qualifies. And that's one area we've really... Um, hit hard and help in, in several areas. I can name playgrounds at the schools, walkways between the school, uh, parking lots, um, at, uh, access paths at Water's Edge. Um, As our population gets older, and I'm thinking from the, from the 
dare I say, geriatric standpoint, but uh, you know, as our residents become older, mobility be becomes an issue. There's yes. just no way around that. So to maintain access to all of our public recreation facilities, I think is important. Mm -hmm. If this can fund it, uh, one constraint at the talking about the historical society and the uh, the beach, the um, if we use grant money for that, it opens it up. Right now, since it was done strictly with township funds, it is a town. We can do whatever we want with it. It's a township function. If we take grant funds, then it, we open it up to the general population. I'm not saying it's a good or a bad thing. That's just what comes with public funds is public access. Right, right now, that's our beach. We can restrict, if we want, to township residents. If we uh, take grant funding, we have to open it up to, to anyone. Right. Um, I, had, I listed nine projects for that additional money that I was trying to save before we lose it. Um, I did um, highlight the foundations, not all the found, I mean, the foundations down below. Mm -hmm. As far as removing blight, that will probably almost, I'm pretty close to sure that's going to qualify. Good. So we could take a barge over there and rip mm -hmm. that stuff out and smooth that beach out. That's one. There's eight other projects that I think, before I get too far, there's one that I think would really surprise everyone that we're very close on that I've been working on for a while. And, but it's, um, I, don't, that, that I don't like, but it's, don't surprise me. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's close. I've got to take some pictures of the sites. Okay. But, um, over the last couple of months, the county's been a little easier to work with, and the response time has been wonderful. So I'm not saying they'll all go through, but there's nine that I'd like to bring back to the board if the airport can't find use for it. But we would have lost, you know, yeah. 60, 70,000 if we hadn't, you know, extended that deadline. So, but those are the ones we're talking about tonight are the 61,000 that are here. Other questions for Mr. Rooney now that we're apprised of what he's got in plan for $61,000? I'd hate, I'd hate to lose it. I mean, I would, I'd, any improvements we can make into this community, uh, we certainly send enough tax money out. I'd like to see some of it come back to improve our community. Questions from the board? Any questions from the public for uh, Mr. Rooney? Mr. Janoski. Ron Janowski, Grow Road. Uh, we're talking about that beach over on East River. Is that what we're talking about? That, that is one of the potential. Because we spent township money to build that rather than... Uh, well, because we didn't spend... We spent only township money. Yeah. In about 10 years, I'm going to probably start getting older. And I might have a little bit of time to go down there. And if I don't walk so good, how do I get down there? Has there been any provisions for the handicapped to use that, that public... Area that the town should pay for? Okay, not yet, but that's one of the things we'd like to see. I would like to who's, see. Who's working on that? Is anybody We're, working on that? Right now? Um, I don't know. Tim, was that part of your uh, was that part of your grant funding was to uh, improve ADA access there? Well, trying to look ahead because, you know, when the board assigned it to the Recreation Department, the commission's been working on it. Project 7A of the nine projects. Accessibility to proposed waterfront park, ADA improvements and removal of architectural barriers. After taking ownership of the Wayne County property and removing the majority of the blight and debris, which we want to do with this. The old decrepit cement stairs leading to the waterfront was covered with new staircase. Currently wheelchair access is not possible to the site. The use of black rain farms would make this possible. Future planning sessions will include accessibility on the site. So that's very important whether the board wants to go with that, like you said, at least we're looking into it. That well, because down, down the road, there there is a ramp that was built to get down to that, uh, I don't know if it's a private marina, I think it's a marina that uh, is used by the apartment buildings or the condominiums mm -hmm. or home in East River. And actually, I, I mean, I'm not sure I want to take a wheelchair down there unless I got pretty good brakes on it, but it is accessible. Maybe dangerous, but accessible. And it's doable, but, uh, you know, I, I said this before when we started on this project, and the Boy Scouts were going to do this, that, you know, maybe we should have thought about it a little more in depth and, and had some plans there, because now if we're going to change that, now we've got a whole new expensive project to work on. The other thing is, Blake, I don't know if this uh, Community Development Block Grant program would uh, uh, apply to this, but on Rio Road we've had some abandoned buildings over there with doors open, windows out, and and virtually falling apart. Who owns that property? 
Uh, I can't say out of memory. We, we know I thought about that, but I think it's private, and I'm not sure. If that is, those are privately held. We're working that, through that with legal, and we're slowly but surely through the courts and through the legal system making progress. I, I, I just, you know, we're, I don't have any information for We're, we're not going to take any, any more time than Detroit does with trying to get rid of their abandoned buildings. I can't, I can't say. I mean, that's, yeah. that's, I've owned a piece of property over there for 20 years, and it's been like that. So it's been 20 years, and the only thing I can think of is no one's really thinking about it. We are thinking about it regularly. I talk to the fire marshal regularly on that. It's a, it is a concern. But we have to follow the laws. We can't we can't arbitrarily go in and start knocking things down that we don't own. So we're aware of it. We're aware. Are the taxes paid on that property? Like Mr. Josky, we're aware of it. We're doing what we can to move the process forward. I don't but, have that information in front of me. Well, does anybody so, here, I mean, everybody here has, has been in this township for a long, long time on commissions and, right. and participating in, in government. I don't think it's an unreasonable question. Maybe you don't. All right, Mr. Janosti, we, we, we under, yeah, I, I did because I already told you, I don't have that data in front of me. Well, We're aware we're, of it. Ask where we got people here, Mr. Reed. Mr. All right, Mr. Janowski, please, 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 let's please take your seat. We know where you stand. You know where we stand. We're addressing it through legal processes. Where does it stand in legal process? Then? I, I don't have the chain of events in front of me. We've been working on Mr. Janowski, enough, 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 enough. Thank you for your input. We're, we're, we, are, we are working on it, Mr. Janowski, trust me. That's all I have in front of me. Moving along, uh, that does complete our, uh, any other questions for Mr. Rooney? Okay, that will conclude our public hearing. Thank you, Mr. Rooney. And we'll move into action items now. From the Rec Department, let's see. I would, Mr. Malvesto, thank you so much. All right. Mr. Supervisor, action uh, item number number one. Uh, this is proposed motion for or recommendation action to authorize, to adopt, to approve uh, the Grosse Hill Township Board grants approval to seek funding from Wayne County Community Development Division for the following 2013-2014 uh, community uh, development block grant projects. Uh, number one would be township uh, would be a senior program at 24,000, a senior alliance program at 17,000, 1,750. Planning at $6,186, uh, ADA improvements at the Centennial Farm uh, at $29,928 for a total of $61,864. Um, Need support. Support. Seconded by uh, Treasurer Van Oss. Um, we could review, but I think uh, Mr. Rooney gave us a pretty good idea on the history and background on this project. What uh, our requirement now will be to discuss among the board and decide do we want to move forward with this with the attached resolution? Any other? I mean, we had our opportunity to query Mr. Rooney on the program community development block grant program, where the money is coming from, where we'd like to see it go. Total of about sixty-one thousand dollars for improvements in the community. Tax dollars coming back in. Comments from the board. All I can say is that the um, anytime we can get uh, grant block money like this to improve, uh, in this case, senior programs, uh, ADA improvements at the Centennial Farm, which in a large part is used by the senior uh, seniors on Grow Seal, uh, not just seniors, but uh, by <laughs> widely by them, uh, and then the planning costs that go into it. Whenever we can get the outside money to help pay for this sort of thing, uh, it's just the way to go. Great. Another improvement to the community and and to our beach. You know, Kim's been working on that. Uh, other comments from the board? Okay, before we vote, I'll open it. Comments to the public present. You can. <laughs> okay, with uh, with uh, with uh, none offered. Uh, those in favor of approving the. Uh, the approval to seek funding from Wayne County Community Development Division for the following uh, the aforementioned 2013-14 Community Development Block Grant Projects. Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None offered. Um, the motion passes. We still have the resolutions. As, do you want to 
resolution to sign, and uh, we'll just move on with this project. Mr. Rooney, thank you for the presentation. Uh, we're just things are just getting better. All right, let's move to action item number three. Mr. Supervisor, I move to approve the proposed lot split number 379 for parts of lots three and four, Golf View Estates, conditioned upon the Township Engineer review and approval of the resulting survey drawing and legal descriptions. Okay, looking for support on the lot split from Mr. Ang. So, okay, uh, seconded by uh, Trustee Budney. So, uh, background. <laughs> so, from a background standpoint, the, uh, the Grozeville Rowing Club and the West Shore Golf and Country Club entered into a purchase agreement upon uh, a purchase agreement for a vacant portion of West Shore's property. The agreement is con contingent upon approval for the lot split, wh whereby parts of lots three and four of Golf U Estates would be split to create a parcel for purchase by the rowing club. Uh, on October 23rd, 2012, the ZBA granted variance for the lot area and parking lot setbacks related to the lot split. And on February 3rd, 2013, the Planning Commission reviewed the request uh, and took action recommending that the Township Board approve the lot split request with the condition that the Township Engineer review and approve the resulting survey drawings and legal descriptions. Uh, all of that said, the uh, West Shore um, Golf and Country Club is looking to partner with uh, Grosjeal Rowing Club split off a very uh, a, a, a small portion of the property so that the rowing club could potentially build a uh, a rowing facility. Uh, it's important to note that there's there's really three steps in this process. So the first step was for the rowing club in uh, West Shore to go to the ZBA and get a couple of variances which were granted. The second step is the lot split, and then the third step would be a special land use. So the lot split, all it does is legally split the lot so West Shore could sell it to whoever they wanted to sell it to. So by approving the lot split, you're approving nothing more tonight than splitting that lot so that West Shore could sell it to, to another party or they could keep it for themselves. Um, any kind of a rowing club that would be put, put up there would be subject to a special land use, which is, which is a uh, part of the zoning ordinance. So that would be a separate, uh, a separate meeting. So there's a uh, resolution from and findings of fact from the Grosso Planning Commission uh, where we went through and we reviewed the lot split against the ordinances. Uh, and at the end of the day, the, uh, the, the Planning Commission recommended approval of the lot split in a 7 to 0 vote. Okay. Any other uh, questions for Clerk Ranka on the Planning Commission action requesting the lot split? All right. Uh, I, I, the, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Oh, sorry. Mr. <laughs> uh, so I just want to get this straight. This is strictly to authorize uh, the, uh, the splitting of the property. This has nothing to do with the uh, purchase of the property or building of a any structure for the rowing club. No. Well, obviously this is leading towards. Yes. That, yes. That's their eventual goal. But approving this does nothing more tonight than, than split that property. So the only discussion would be on the split. The only discussion tonight legally is on the split. Thanks. Other questions for uh, Mr. Anka? Any questions from the public present? Mr. Clark? Okay, guys. Oh, you got it. Attorney. Ready to start here? You're, you're, you're hot now. Okay, good. <laughs> what do you call it, Park Lane? Anyway, uh, are, are we going to go back, come back when you're going to build something? Yeah, so what will happen next is if the lot split goes through, uh -huh. the rowing club will have, you know, they'll have to figure out what they're going to do from a financial standpoint, and then they'll have to get what they call site plan approval. So um, yacht clubs, rowing clubs, things like this in a residentially zoned area are subject to site plan approval. So it will come before the planning commission. The planning commission will review the proposed use. In this case, of you know, potentially it's a, it's a rowing boat club, and the planning commission will, will you know, go through the zoning acts of how special land use applies. Okay. They will then make a recommendation to the township board, and then the township board has an So they'll come back up here for the, when, when you get to the building problem. Yes. Uh, pro uh, not problem, but process. process. Sure. Okay. Because I'm hearing a lot of things going, they're going to build it on the river, or they're going to carry the boats across the, across the road to, to the water. Yep, separate, so, separate discussion. All stuff that the Planning Commission will, will review in public hearing. Okay, and those, all right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Other questions or comments from the public? All right, with none offered, those in, those in favor of approving the lot split previously uh, defined by Clerk Ranka, um, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? 
That offer? Thank you. The uh, lot split is approved. The process continues. Next item number four and five. We, we, got rid, we got rid of five. Right. Well, yeah. Uh, I uh, have a motion to accept with regret the resignation of Mr. David Nadu from the Public Service Commission, effective February 25th, 2013, and to approve the appointment of Mr. James Nelson to the Public Service Commission for the term length of February 25th, 2013 to March 31st, 2014, based upon the recommendation of the Public Service Commission. Support. Support. Okay, motion by uh, by Trustee Bundy and supported. I, I, heard, I heard Ted Van Oss first, so I'll give it, I'll give it to uh, Treasurer Van Oss. Um, background? Little little background. Uh, David just joined our commission um, a couple of months ago. Uh, he's had his house up for sale for quite some time. His actual plan was to sell the house, buy something on the island. It didn't work out that way. He's uh, moving off the island, and so he needed to resign. Uh, we had the application of Mr. Nelson. We looked it over. We uh, talked to him, and uh, we're, uh, we would be pleased to have him on the commission. Okay, are there questions, comments for Mr. Buddy? Mr. Buddy. Yes, sir. What was the detail of that conversation? Who, who uh, reviewed the application? And was it presented to your entire commission? The the DPS commission, the chairperson, uh, myself as liaison, and uh, um, and we asked Ted to talk to him, uh, looked it over, and made that made the decision. That's the way the DPS commission works. I have issues with that, but we'll discuss that after the meeting. It's, okay, it's, um, it's, it's kind of an ongoing issue on uh, non-uniformity on commission pending appointments. I think it's something that's not going to be addressed tonight, but it's something we need to work on in the future. I think we're pretty much in agreement that we need to take a deeper look at that. Uh, this is one of the few meetings uh, Jim Nelson is not that. Yeah, hasn't attended for some reason. In fact, uh, he's, he, I had talked to him, and he said he was going to be here. So I don't know why he. Is. Once again, sir, it has nothing to do with Mr. Nelson. I know him, and he's an upstanding guy. So, all right. Uh, the comments from the uh, from the board. Any comments from the public present? All right. With that offered, two parts. First. Uh, I guess we, we did roll them into one, though, to yes. accept with regret Mr. Nato's resignation and to welcome uh, Mr. Nelson on board the uh, Public Service Commission. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Did I? I'm sorry. I, did I, was, there, was it an A or was it an I? Or? No, aye. Okay. I uh, wanted to make sure. So uh, thank you, Mr. Post. Thank you, board, and uh, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Nato. And uh, thank you, Mr. Nelson, for stepping up. That completing our action items, we'll step to the clerk's report. Uh, Franka. Mr. Supervisor, um, just uh, for the board to note that uh, the Miss Gray will be in, in training um, second week in, in March for a few days for the Michigan Association of Clerks. Um, I had my training here about uh, three weeks ago. Um, from a planning commission and update standpoint, next planning commission meeting is March 4th, um, police commission meeting March 12th, and then uh, regarding the, uh, the deeper look into how the uh, board has a unified agreement on looking into, uh, into, into commission uh, liaisons, I know that uh, Trustee Smith and I have been working back and forth on, on some documents and with some recent activities that's uh, taken a back seat that we need to look back into again. That that's it for a clerk's report today. Okay, uh, thank you, Kirk Renka. Mr. Treasurer. Uh, <coughs> thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, <coughs> January invest investment information is not complete yet, but you can get a investment sheet from uh, my office at any time. Uh, Net will certainly help you. They will be available at the next board meeting. Uh, all unpaid 2012 summer and winter tax bills are due by March 1st, that's summer and winter. To avoid delinquency payments, 
uh, to avoid delinquency, payments will be taken here at Township with a late penalty only until Friday at 5 p.m. Beginning on March 2nd, all unpaid 2012 property tax bills will be considered delinquent and must be paid at Wayne County with further penalty and interest. And I strongly urge anybody that's listening uh, to avoid that trip. That is an experience. Uh, if you need any help or questions regarding delinquent taxes, call the township uh, deputy treasurer, who is Annette Wartsmith at uh, extension 232. She'll help you. If you have any personal questions for me, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, our next airport Commerce Park Commission meeting will be the third Monday of, we are going to hold one, right? <laughs> of March. Uh, look forward to seeing you there. I have nothing else. Okay, thank you, Mr. Treasurer. Move on to trustee reports. Mr. Navesto. No, uh, actually, Mr. Uh, Mr. Rooney uh, gave us about all, all the updated news on rec, you know, rec department and uh, as well as uh, Chief uh, Murdoch, so I have nothing this evening. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bundy. Yeah. Uh, uh, nothing much new with the DPS. Uh, we were looking over budget. Everything is, seems to be budget right now. Um, our next meeting is March 12th, uh, Tuesday. And uh, tomorrow we have a ZBA meeting. And uh, as usual, I would encourage everybody here and out there to come to the meetings, uh, come to your commission meetings, come to come to the board meetings, and see how your township runs. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Bending. Mrs. Smith. Uh, thank you, um, Communications Commission. Our next meeting is March 13th at 7 p.m. We have had two work sessions recently to go over the proposals for a new website. Um, several more meetings are planned with dates and times um, of 2.28 at 7 p.m. here at Township Hall and then 3.2 at 10 a.m. here at Township Hall. Um, I encourage everybody to come on, come on out and provide us feedback or lend us their technical expertise. Um, additionally, as far as the Communications Commission is concerned, um, Ted Fournier, in, in conjunction with another gal, Marie, and I cannot remember her last name, but um, produced a 30-minute video on Voight's Bridge, and it is actually airing on GITV. Um, I recommend everybody take a look at it. It's very interesting. It gives a great historical perspective of the bridge and um, how it's come to be with the GI Bridge Company. Um, as far as the Festival Commission, our next meeting is March 20th at 7 p.m. Um, unfortunately, I have some sad news to report is during the recent holiday season, uh, Mr. Brian Johnson, a member of the Grozeal Festival Commission, passed away after a lengthy illness. Um, Brian served uh, many years as the auditorium man manager for Grozeal High School. Um, during Brian's five plus years with the commission, he coordinated all the technical aspects of the enter entertainment, including sound, lighting, and staging. Uh, Mr. Johnson brought years of knowledge and experience to the Festival Commission. Um, his business had the status of being known as one of the premier sound and lighting companies in Detroit. Um, he's going to be missed, and um, it's unfortunate that I have to report this news. That's it. He will be missed. And uh, just keep his family in your thoughts and prayers. Exactly. I assume there's that you wrap up your yes, report yeah, on that note. Thank you. So. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Mr. Prozett. Bringing up the rear. Good evening, everyone. And, uh, thank you for this opportunity to talk about a special long-term project, the uh, horse mill bike path. This has been a culmination of three years of work by a lot of people, and I will take no credit for all of that work. It has been done by people like Brian Pollock, our chairman, Jane Fiegel, Alan Valiquette, Rob Albrecht, Jim Budney, Barry, Gary Bailey, Ted Van Oss, Dale Riem, and the, the conversations about this bike path have been incredible and convoluted and difficult. I think this is the longest single deliberation for a bike path, but we are looking like we're at the end of the path from talk to action. Uh, I have a in your board a document that says in your board packet it, it says after review 
in unanimous support of the completed horse mill bike plans, the Grazier Bike and Pedestrian Commission requests that the completed proposed horse mill bike path plans be forwarded to the Grosville Township Board for prior review to the scheduled 311 2013 board meeting. The Grosier Bike and, Ad and Pedestrian Advisory Commission request that the finished plans for the path be considered by the Township Board as a discussion item on the 3-11-2013 agenda. Uh, final paragraph says that several key members involved in the planning process will be in attendance at this scheduled board meeting, and uh, they are. Uh, Brian is here, Jane is here, Ellen's here, Aaron's here. I'm here. And we've, uh, I, I felt like trying to keep up. You ever see the movie where the train is going 80 miles an hour and a guy on a horse is trying to catch it? <laughs> That's the way this bike path group has worked. They're incessant and they're fast and they don't ever stop. And, and they put together a great deal of effort. So I'd like you to let Brian come to the uh, podium and give you a little bit of a presentation and uh, see if we can answer any questions for this board and for this community. Thank you, Phil. Thank you much for those kind words. I appreciate it. And in the spirit of trying to catch everyone up here, I've got a, a quick presentation about the, the horse mill bike path. So essentially, this came about back in 2009 when the, the former township board put together a bike path committee in order to utilize uh, existing bike path millage funds for construction funds, as well as put it input into the recreation master plan. And um, you know, during that process, we identified many needs, including the horse mill path. And later on, uh, the board actually approved action to proceed with the horse mill path, so we looked into bids. Uh, this is just a very quick overview of you know, a variety of the paths that we looked at. All of them, except for the horse mill, seem to have either cost uh, you know, uh, problems because of cost or because of uh, political issues or both. So we decided to move ahead with the horse mill path, which would connect with the Meridian path um, you know, on the south side of horse mill up to thoroughfare, crossing at thoroughfare, and then going on the north side up until Park Lane. We thought that that made sense because, you know, for one thing, this is open space, so it looked at it as, as a, we we're hoping that it would be a quicker process, you know, less political in nature because we're going through right of way and, you know, we have one property owner, the, you know, the township of Groziel, as well as its, you know, east-west connection. And, you know, there was a, a path coming up, you know, a sidewalk coming up, uh, uh, Park Lane, and there's thoughts that in the future we might be able to provide some sort of facility to connect that up to Horse Mill, as well as there was, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, wishes to have some sort of facility on East River in the future. So we thought this was a logical case to move forward. Unfortunately, we hit some roadblocks along the way. One of them was that there was higher than anticipated construction costs, as well as their scope creep based on uh, Wayne County's mandate for drainage improvements. So because of that, there w we needed to look at you know, two things, either increasing the, co uh, the available funds or reducing the cost. So we looked at both options. So um, you know, this year, we applied for the Transportation Alternatives Program uh, grant. Uh, and we were very competitive, but unfortunately, we did not win that, uh, that grant application. But you know, the other path is we were looking at ways of decreasing costs. So the township and uh, Rains Engineering, as well as the, uh, the low bidder for the horse mill path, uh, the compu, uh, met, had a meeting earlier, um, earlier this month, and they talked about concessions from Wayne County as far as their fees, as well as the utilization of uh, drainage funds from the DPS process. So you know, taking that at that word, we felt that that would essentially get us to the place where we could actually construct this. So. Uh, Mr. Posiak asked that we bring this to you guys tonight to discuss the actual project, and in the, the coming days you shall uh, receive official plans as well as an official source of all, where all the funds are coming from for this path. And then at the next meeting, we're hoping that you'd uh, you know, consider an action on the actual bike path. So after that, you know, if you guys want have any questions based on uh, this overview or anything else, we'd... We're all here. We'd you know, love to answer your questions. Uh, I have a question. Um, as far as the drainage funds, I, th I think you might want to put this off until the last 
meeting because at the DPS, what we agreed to was to pay for the horse mill park lane problem. We hadn't agreed to pay for all the drainage. So that should actually be brought back in front of the commission if that's what you're, you know, what you're planning on. Yeah. We'll double check on that, and if that's the case, then we'll definitely come back. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. As I read, Barry? I know there were discussions at the commission level, and there were some funds allocated, and I think you were talking about that. I don't know if you were talking about that. Yeah. The discussion, as I recall, was just for the horse mill park lane problem by the Presbyterian Church. It wasn't for the full length of horse, you know, meridian to park lane. Okay. So that has to be looked at by the commission. Definitely. I want to make sure we get all the, make sure we have all the funding before we proceed. So thank you very much. I have a couple of comments. First of all, I'm all in favor of the spike path for a couple of reasons. Number one, I think it's a pretty good choice for that location, the least obtrusive, the least hassle with the residents. Secondly, we've already buried a truckload of money in it, just getting ready to do it. I would hate to see that money literally go into a drawing file someplace and never be used because it's, it's, it's big. It's a big number. But I think before we move forward any further, before you bring it before us, you need to get a couple of meetings together. Number one, we need to get Ann, uh, Barry, and Dale probably in the same room and get exact numbers because we're kind of shooting from the hip here. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think this commission, this board will be more than willing to support it as long as we've got all our ducks in a row coming forward. So we need to have that meeting in so that we know exactly what kind of drainage funds, and it needs to get done fairly quickly because if we want to move forward with this this spring, which we need to bid on quickly, uh, we need to get the DPS commission on board with the drainage. I, I think the drainage fund is applicable here for those drainage issues. Now, granted, most of the drainage problems are Wayne counties. We know they're not going to do them, so we're going to have to step up and do them. We have the funds available. But it's imperative that we move quickly and get the financing right, get the people right, because I think you have the support of this board. But we need to do it fairly quickly, otherwise we're going to miss the bid process. Mm -hmm. And we share the same concerns as you guys have as far as making sure that we have you know, the, the appropriate funds in place. And you know, some of us have, you know, we want, um, we just wanted to bring this before you so that way you guys were aware of it. And in this meantime, we're going to make sure that we get everything you know, official and taken care of. So rest assured. Good job. Thank you. The process is taking place, or it has taken place. Mm -hmm. That's correct. We have a bid in, in place. And as Ted alluded to, there is some urgency in getting the bid, uh, getting the project approved. And it's because of construction issues in early spring that it would be very advantageous for us to get it done that way. Now, I will point out that it says here, number two, review official plans and funding sources. The idea tonight was to make sure that everybody recognizes that this is not just coming from one pot. We'll, we'll sit down with Dale and, and uh, DPS and, and Barry and, and we'll come up with suggestions and wherever these commissions and committees are comfortable with supplying funds, we'll say we got enough. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you, Brian, right. and thanks, Commission. Nice Thank job, everyone. This is obviously an excellent summary of, uh, of where the commission's at. You guys are obviously about 99.5% of the way there. You just got a couple more I I's to dot and T's to cross. But, uh, but I think uh, I'm confident that you guys will, will take it the rest of the way. I'm glad that uh, you've brought it as far as you have. Uh, the one, one important note is that uh, you know the one fatality that we've had, pedestrian fatality, uh, actually on the island was on horse mill. So that uh, was another another reason for uh, for this location. But you know, you guys have done a great job, and we're just uh, we're almost there, and excited to see it back here at the board. All right, uh, Mr. Pollock, thank you. Uh, Mr. Pozen, other portions of your uh, trustee report. That's it.
Thank you, sir. This is great. Mr. Supervisor, uh, may I ask Mr. Pollock to provide me with this uh, presentation by email, please? Sure. Consider him asked. <laughs> Okay, that okay, let's see, that concludes the trustees. I guess it's up to me. Supervisors report. Oh. Some odds and ends tonight. Um, AARP, this, and these are available in the back of the room. The AARP is uh, still offering free tax assistance for the 2012 Michigan federal tax returns. Uh, flyers are available in the back of the room. We have them at Township Hall, I think. Here is what it looks like. Again, they're, they're on the uh, little podium in the back of the room where you can, like I said, get one from Township Hall. Uh, Down River Community Conference 2013 Energy Assistance Program for those who qualify. That flyer is also available in the back room. It looks like this. And it has the uh, uh, qualification numbers on the back, so to see if you qualify. The, uh, let's see, the Daddy Daughter Dance was a success. The Easter Egg Hunt will be Saturday, March 23rd at Water's Edge. It's a lot of fun. That flyer is also available. It's in the back room. It looks like this. And those tickets are available at the rec department. Should get them in advance because there, last, last year there was just a gang of kids there. We, it was kind of a, not, not, the, not a bright sunny spring day, but there was still a gang of kids there. Uh, we have Wayne County Health on Wheels Mobile Unit. That flyer looks like this. It will be at the Guidance Center on Wednesday, uh, February 27th, 12 to, 4, 12 to 4. That flyer looks like this. And Wayne County, again, hazardous waste collection. Stuff that you should put in your trash cans for waste management to pick up. That includes uh, some of the things like mercury thermometers, fire extinguishers, automotive batteries, antifreeze motor oil, gasoline. Uh, nail polish, you know, stuff that we don't want to surprise our waste management contract people with. And that and there's a few dates. The next one going up is April 13th uh, at Redford Public Services. That's just too far away. The next close one, Henry Ford Community College, is in June. And Westland Shopping Center, uh, Southland Shopping Center is not till October. So I guess if you want to get rid of this stuff cleanly and legitimately, you might just have to go out to Redford Public Services. Um, we'll see if we can't do better than that. And that is going to complete my supervisor's report. I'll turn it over to the township manager. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, I have a few brief comments, but uh, I'd like to start by saying I only bring these comments up because, um, by way of status, not because the squeaky wheel deserves the grease. Um, simply put, we've been working on projects for quite some time, and I'd like to reference the real road project. Without going into the past year and a half of history, about a month ago, legal had finalized our notice. Department of Community Development did a follow-up inspection. We're in the process of scheduling that hearing. There's a hearing process that we need to follow by ordinance, a very detailed hearing process. So once that process takes place, the hearing is held by the building official and the hearings officer, a recommendation will be made to come to this board. Um, how, how that plays out, could there's several different scenarios. It could be... Um, very smooth or it could be very long drawn out and legal and uh, I would probably um, just by my hunch think that this is going to be more long drawn out than it would be smoothly so we take this process very seriously and, and we will be going through that but about uh, a month ago we cleared um, our entire um, notice procedure with legal so that is getting in the process of taking place we're trying to schedule that right now so, thank you. We are working on it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dave. All right. At this time, uh, concluding that, we're going to move to a discussion item. This board has expressed interest in uh, changing the format of the business meetings. Uh, different boards have different uh, goals and objectives. And as a supervisor, it's much easier for me to work with the board to be on the same, to have us all pretty much on the same page on as to how we want to run. It's it's, even though I'm responsible for running it, it's our business meeting. It's your town hall, it's our business meeting. So we can accommodate both. Uh, we have this for a discussion item. Um, it will involve 
uh, we'll discuss it tonight. It'll involve a change in the township's policies and procedures manual eventually. But right now, um, and the board members have this, uh, our, our business meetings are operated on it's basically a slight adaption of, a, of the previous schedule. Uh, the only additions I made to it were to include the trustee reports. Those were not handled by the previous board. Unfortunately, the remaining order of business in the uh, that still exists in the PMP manual uh, had public comment at the beginning of the meeting, public comment during the meeting, public comment at the end of the meeting, and uh, again, no opportunity for uh, trustee reports. I thought the trustee reports were important to let you know what the trustees are doing through their liaisons and just their general contributions to the community. I proposed a uh, change in agenda to the previous board, got a little feedback on it, so I guess they were happy with uh, how we were doing things. But this board has expressed other interest. I put uh, a couple of feelers out. I got responses from board members. I got say, um, timely comments from Deputy Clerk Gray that uh, will help uh, make this, I think, even better. And the what I'm proposing, and uh, I guess I'll see if I can ask Dale, if you would, uh, or so to put this on the overhead so that the public present can see. Sorry to... If we can put that on the overhead, please, so that the public present and those at home can see what uh, we're considering. And I'll go through some of the logic behind it. First of all, it's uh, obviously call to order, Pledge of Allegiance, our uh, standard procedure. Uh, public hearing, those have to be posted. There is a, a, a time frame in advance. I think some of them require 10 days. It depends on the funding source, if, if it involves a funding source. But there are legal hoops for public hearings. They have to be part of a meeting, but they're a separate portion of the meeting. So uh, those would be probably the first thing, because those have a hard scheduling criteria. From there, uh, again, this is just a proposal. We'd step to presentations. Presentations are usually scheduled. They can be added um, if they, because we offer the uh, opportunity for political candidates to introduce themselves, and that may be on an ad hoc basis. So primarily, if we have one that is scheduled, that we go first, but we do offer the floor to candidates, or if something pops up that we need to have presented at a meeting for one reason or another, we can add that. That would be next before we get into the, the gist of the meeting. And then things we have to do is to work on the agenda. So we would go to additions, amendments, and approve the agenda. And I think this is where Mrs. Gray um, thought it would be a good idea to uh, bring in public. Yeah, bring in uh, some public comment. Of course, I messed this up because I meant to put in the consent agenda immediately after this. So if you would put in a item F1 and... Uh, Microsoft Word bites me again when they bullet uh, inputs. So anyway, brief public comment, limited to the day's agenda items. You have access to our agenda. You have access to all our board packets. What we have in front of us is all online. It's all available to you. You can make your comments on what you would like us to consider prior to action items, prior to amending the agenda um, at the beginning of the meeting. Okay, again, now you know what we know, basically in plenty of time to research, learn what you want to learn, and make your comments, brief comments, and I, I haven't decided on a time limit, nobody has offered me, uh, but possibly two minutes to make a comment on agenda items for that day. Then we move on to the consent agenda, uh, follow and, and run that just as we do now, same constraints, then action items, the reports, clerk's report, treasurer's report, the trustees, the supervisors, township manager. Uh, we would go into discussion items after that, as we did today, followed by public comment on any topic. You could re-beat us up on an action item or something that you would just like to see brought up. But this, again, it's public comment. It really gets stump the dummy. Yeah, you can bring up something that I'm not prepared to answer. It happens all the time. If you let me know ahead of time, I will research and have an answer for you. If you want to come and make a comment that you like the answer, you didn't like the answer, 
that's what the microphone's for, that's what that's for, but to ad hoc questions, I'm not, I'm not going to give an answer that I'm not confident in. I'm not going to have the answer to everything that might be vexing you at a particular moment, and I think the trustees all support me in that. We don't like to be surprised. We, we really do. It's my intent to help. It's your town hall. I want you to leave here satisfied, but there's, you know, we're, we're, we only have so much time. We're here to help. We'll try to get you answers. Much better to email, call, stop in and ask us. Give us time to research, and then if you want to bring up the issue, we'll have the ability to answer it. But surprises, uh, well, I'll just say, I don't know, and that'll be it. So that is my suggestion for a new business meeting format. I think we uh, I think we can serve the public well and efficiently that way. Um, again, it's your town hall, but we're here for business. We open the door for your comments. Uh, the law says we have to allow for public comments once in accordance with established rules. These would be part of the established rules. Robert's rules would constitute the other portion of established and recorded rules. But I'm asking you to board to consider this. I'm doing this as a discussion item so that the uh, those watching at home, those present tonight, will see how we may recraft our township meeting and bring it up as an agenda item at a future board meeting. Comments uh, from the board on uh, if this is what we want to see, if you'd like to see it changed, tweaked, or changed dramatically. Uh, I think it's a good idea. I like what um, Deputy Clerk Gray provided. Um, with the change of public comment towards the beginning. I think it makes sense so that people don't have to necessarily stay through a long, drawn-out meeting if all they have to do is, is express an opinion. Um, I, I think that this is the way to go, or at least going in the right direction. I, I just don't want to ask sure. Warren, uh, do you feel, based on your that statement you just made, that the public, the early public comment should be limited to the agenda or be on any topic? Uh, that is a good question. Um, I know sometimes somebody just might have a beef or want to state something publicly and get it off their chest and that might be it. Um, I, don't, I don't necessarily feel like it has to be pertinent to the agenda. Well, we, now we did have two public comment periods. The first was going to, was intended to be to get the comments from the public before we vote on an action item. So I would like to, I mean, it's my idea or my intent that the first public comment period would be on action items so we have your inputs as we discuss. Before we vote on an item, we have your inputs on it. You know, publicly provided inputs that are recorded. Uh, that would be restricted to action items of that board meeting only. And then public comment at the end on any topic, anything that uh, you want to commend us for, tell us what a great job we're doing. Tell us what you'd like to see done differently or just complain about the weather. Yeah, but you're still going to hold people here for the whole meeting if all they want to comment on is Again, it's, the stars. Uh, we, we also sometimes have people in here that we're paying by the hour who, are, who want to be part of the business aspect. And it is a business meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we could hold other meetings that were just general discussion sessions if we wanted to do that. But again, the business meeting, to get business done. Uh, we have to stay here till the end. Uh, I, don't, I don't say that flippantly, but if we can restrict the initial input to action items before we vote on them, before we commit to them, you know, we are we are answering to the public that way. And then I just think general commentary at the end. Um, that's my suggestion, but it's again, it's our it's our meeting, so it's whatever we consent on. I have a question based on your comments then. When we get into the action items, are you going to allow public comment at every action item? I will not. I will restrict it to that initial input, and that should allow us to control, okay. get the job done. They will have the opportunity. We exceed the requirements of the Open Meetings Act, and we, we still offer the town hall approach, but we can get business done without going to the wee small hours where our Abilities to make right decisions, I think, are diminished the tireder, and we've seen plenty of meetings like that, as we, some of us recall, um, <laughs> kind of chuckling. Um, I, I just, I think it'll work. I think I'd like to try it for a few meetings. 
and then maybe uh, see if it is worth it. If the, if the residents aren't happy, or we're not happy, we'll redo it or we might reopen it. <coughs> Mr. President, I think in general I'm, I'm happy with the, the way you've got this laid out and I'd be fine uh, to give this a trial. Um, per, uh, per the Treasurer's comments about free public comment limited the agenda items, the, the public comment at the beginning of the, of the agenda I think should absolutely be specific and pertinent to the agenda items so that we can get through them in a timely manner and then have the, the open public comment at the end. Right, that way people are guaranteed they can talk about the agenda items and we're not here waiting until the hours in the, in the morning to uh, to get to the action items. Thank you, Mr. Hunt. Any other comments from the board? I think, uh, again, I'm, I'm open to suggestions. I think we do a couple of trial runs and we'll, uh, we'll consider this at the, the next board meeting. Comments from the all right, and that, with that being said, uh, I guess this one will open up public comment and see what the, those present think about it. So closing the discussion, uh, moving forward, public comment. We all know the rules. Three minutes. State your name. Keep it clean, Mr. Clark. Just closed it. Public comment. Public comments coming. Bring it. Uh, Woody Clark, Park Lane. Uh, legal fees. Ooh. Legal fees on the warrant list dated uh, February 21st, 2013, to O'Reilly Rancino in the amount of $1,125. That's it? Yeah. Okay, the fire department and the police department came over to my house uh, three or four weeks ago and took me to a hotel on uh, South Shore and uh, they were very good, very courteous, and really appreciated. Uh, did we hire another attorney? Did we hire another attorney? We retained an attorney. Another attorney for reasons? Biosha expert. Biosha expert, okay. Next one is how much was the construction cost from uh, Road down to the uh, uh, south of uh, going south. Construct path. Okay, this is part of the, my comment about questions that I don't. If I knew, okay, my God. If I knew about it ahead of time, if I knew about it ahead of time, I have the answer for you. Okay, you have a bid process. You had a bid already. Who else was on the bid besides Combo? Because he's supposed to got it. Again, you know, what, what do you there were three bidders. Okay. What well, was a high bid and a low bid? That's all. I'm, I, you, you pick combo, so. I can give you copies of that. Okay. All right. I'll stop the seat. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Other comments, questions? Mr. Janowski. Discussion items. Isn't it in the past that when the board discussed a topic that the public was able to participate in that discussion? Wasn't guaranteed. Wasn't guaranteed. Well, it is written in the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, township uh, rules and regulations that you shut the microphone off on anybody either. Um, you know, we can do this two ways, okay? We've been trying to do it the right way. And I agree with you on that public comment at the beginning for the action items, okay? But when you have an action item and you start discussing things and some, some wild hitter ends up coming out in public and, and other questions are raised, shouldn't the public be able to discuss that with you? And cutting them off and just having to make a, a, a concerned statement at the beginning of the meeting doesn't necessarily have, have the public participate in what might be a good decision for both the board and the uh, and the public. So I think I think that's where you you know I I agree that a short comment at the beginning concerning the action items would probably be appropriate in the in the general comments at the end, which you don't like and you just shut the microphone off, because I'm having a real problem with that. And I'm I'm, I'm losing my patience and I'll take legal action. You can maybe get a legal opinion on that one. You, you know, it, it's not going to go on. You can have a, re I'll have a reporter out here asking everybody questions when they go out to their car. Because this is not the way to run a meeting. 
So I, you know, and I'm I'm not going to beat that to death. This new attorney, this Myosha, what what's that all about? As well, there is an investigation, a Myosha investigation mm -hmm. in progress, and we need specific legal help. We the board felt we needed to have specific expert legal help in that area. Are we afraid of something? Absolutely. Okay. We're protecting our township dollars. Okay. Um, thirdly, you seem to take everything, these questions, personally. Uh, I see the treasurer. I see the clerk, the assistant, or the deputy clerk. Um, we have a township manager. We have a DPS manager. We have all the all the official people that we pay handsomely to know the answers to certain questions. Like, I'll bet you I couldn't get the price of, of wholesale water from the city of Detroit, and yet you just had a, a you know a study session about what we're going to do with the water rates and how that's going to affect us. And yet I'll bet you there isn't anybody in this room that can tell me what the wholesale water rates are from the city of Detroit. I can tell you this time by this time tomorrow. I can, I can tell you by noon tomorrow. What, what, did, what did these people do yesterday? What did they do while well, yesterday was Sunday? I'm sorry. What what have they been doing? Like Rio Road, for the 20 years that, that, that I lived in this area, okay, I never hear anybody talking about who's who's responsible for Rio Road, what department? Of anything that would go on or the legal ramifications of what's going on there, who would know if the taxes are paid there? Who would know who owns that? If this is the discussion that Mr. Reeves said, well, in, in, in recent history, They've been looking into that. Are the taxes paid there? I believe they are, yeah. Okay, and it's privately owned? Yes. Okay, well, there we go. We got an answer. You turned the microphone off on me. You shouldn't take things personal. Keep in the I, I mean, I'm talking to you because yeah. you're running the meeting, but it's your, your responsibility. If I have a police question, ask the chief of police. If I have a fire question. Okay, again, uh, Mr. Janowski. Well, I'm just giving you suggestions. Okay. <laughs> Okay, you understand? Any I, questions I, for me? I understand. Huh? Any questions for me? No, sir. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Janowski. Mr. Reem. Mr. Supervisor. Related to the discussion of the item on the agenda structure, that's one of the things that um, I think is important to discuss. Do we want this to be a question and answer session? Myself, other managers, there's a lot of things that, yes, we know we can answer off the top of our heads, but there's also a lot of things that we may not be able to. And, of course, I think it was referenced earlier that uh, if you sit in the uh, audience, you start thinking of different things and start wanting to ask different questions. And, of course, um, sometimes those thought processes and, uh, and way of organization of thoughts don't necessarily follow um, a, a logical pattern. And I think those are the types of things where, um, for me as an administrator, see where the meetings have got, started to get away. But I've attended a lot of different meetings with a lot of different communities. And they do not, for reasons of this is a business meeting sake, allow question and answer. It's public comment, not public debate. That's a whole different philosophy than what we've been used to. And I think that's the, the, the main question that um, we need to address in relationship to how we're going to structure the business meetings. And those are just my thoughts. Uh, and I agree with you uh, almost wholeheartedly. If I can answer a question, I certainly would like to, but that opens up to all those questions I can't answer on, a, on the spur of the moment that nobody else can answer. And again, we have plenty of avenues of communication to me, to all the members of the board, if you have a question, ask us sometime before the meeting. And uh, if you don't get the answer you like or you get ignored, bring that up as a public comment. I've, I, again, I try to answer all my phone calls. I try to get answers to people. I know I've failed a few times, but I think my percentage is pretty high, and I think all the rest of the trustees are uh, the same uh, of the same mindset. But we can, I can always come up with a question that no one can answer. Anybody here can, can do that. So. Public comment, again, ask us the question. Give us time to research and we'll get an answer to you. If you think we let you down, make that part of the public comment. Or if we did the if we gave you the answer you wanted and you're happy, say thanks in public comment. That'd be nice also. So uh, anyway. 
One second. I, I, I gotta have a second left. Actually, you were about 40 seconds over, but just for you, Mr. Janowski, because I've only cut the mic off on three people, and you were all three of them. Okay, so, well, that's, that's good. You keep doing that. But uh, I've already proved in the past that when, a, when, when someone, you know, one of the citizens wants to find out information from the township, we can't ask it at, at a township meeting, and we'll try to call, call one of us, and I, I've got... I've actually got video of, 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 of uh, a supervisor in the township. I called and they told me that he, he, he had already gone home and I got a picture of him standing in, a, in the window talking to another supervisor, okay? So we can't do that. We can't depend on the phone system. And then I've also tried to FOIA the township for information and failed in that respect, which led to a big lawsuit. So you know what? We better start, we better start opening up to the public Okay, it's pretty sparse out here, but I think the public is really starting to wake up a little bit, and they're starting to get concerned on what's going on. And, and you know what? If you don't want to answer the questions here, there's another step that can be taken. And 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 okay, I welcome okay. I welcome more people to come to public meetings. I welcome more comments. That's it. Twenty good, because you don't answer any questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Dust. The other comment from the public present. But, with, with that offered, um, motion to adjourn. Did I miss I didn't miss any. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by Trustee Pogiak. Second by Trustee Bogey. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, not offered. We will uh, make it 9 20. <laughs>